Why don't the women fight? Can I ask? Oh, wait, the women can't defend their own fucking idea. You need men to defend feminism. So that's why the whole thing is stupid. So the second men don't defend it, it, does, it just fails as a fucking ideology. It's garbage. May I tell you something now? So this is the thing. This is when we assume that women perhaps don't have the physical or even mental ability to go to assume. a war. Assume. Wait, wait, wait. Because this is the thing. For example, in Ukraine, a lot of women took up arms. And in fact, I'm Angola. L Ukraine. Wait, wait. I'm Angola. Stupid. This is all PSYOP. It's all, it's all Twitter. There's not actually like Ukrainian women with a gun in a picture, bro. You're not gonna beat Putin. Wait, wait. I'm Angolan. And Don't lie. Listen. To the people at home. Wait. No worries. I'll talk about yeah, my but personal you wanna story. Go to war? You no. Fight wait. The let me tell you. Let me tell you something. This is the thing. I think it's Pause also it. really like silly she to assume said, that. For Do example, you want to go to war? Do you want to fight in the front lines? And it's like, obviously not. <laughs> That's the whole well, thing. Well, wait a minute. Was a fair fight if the women were fighting against other women, not women fighting against men. Do you hear what I you're saying? <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is that biologically, yes, but steroidally, I mean, in what, men in what, are stronger on what, physically, riddle me this, in what, physically. in what dimension, this perfect world you speak of, where we have like, say, an equal amount of women in our military as men, in what dimension? Are our op opponents going to have the same setup knowing, because everybody knows what you just said, women are not built to fight like men are? On what, in, in what parallel universe would that ever happen? Well, you know, the and you said fair, you said if it's a fair saying, fight, I'm saying, listen, I'm all's saying, fair in love and war. What, isn't listen, that what listen, I'm not saying, oh, just whoever women want to sign up. I'm saying that there are some women that are built bigger and stronger than some men that are smaller than other sure. men. So if those women wanted to fight and were capable and on a similar level, why not? Because there's not enough of them for it to... Number one, it'll never be fair because life isn't fair. We've established that. And number two, there's not enough women for it to ever come close to being fair like you spoke of. You said if we were fighting... I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it has to be an equal number of women as men. I'm saying that if there are some women who are more geared towards the well, kind of like combat, in, in countries combat like, yeah. and size-wise and physique-wise uh, are stronger than some men who go out for the military, then, what, then they should be able to do that if they want I mean, to. that's that's sound to me. And I feel like that could work, but the only issue with, with reality in that is that in countries like ours where the women are allowed to fight, the standards to qualify to be in the military are different. Like there's a woman's standard and a men's standard. And I think if everyone had to meet the men's standard and there was just one standard for qualified combatant, that would make sense. Because then only the most buff Arnold built like women who are ready to kick some fucking ass for real, like a man or like any of their counterparts, because they're all trying to be a soldier, right? This isn't about feminism, it's protecting the country. That would make sense. But we make it so women don't have to run as fast, don't have to carry as much, and that doesn't make any fucking sense because then our enemies are just going to have armies full of men and they're going to fucking cream us. <laughs> They were just they were just saying like I was just reacting to when that woman said, Oh, you wanna to go to war? Like, she she knows that they, women don't want to do that. Obviously the, the red haired girl obviously is obviously it should be the people who can best protect our country. I'm glad we agree on that. And no, as you could basically all these girls are like pretty hard feminists, except the red haired girl who is the host in the blue dress, she's quite conservative. And then there's an older African-American woman that they call auntie later on with dreadlocks, if we get that far. And she's obviously much wiser. So she's a bit more conservative as well. All right, so can I just take you back to this question when the guy said, oh, you know, you don't stand by your feminism when something breaks down or you need to change a tire and then you need a guy to do it, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of women who can change a tire, who can install a sink in the kitchen, who whatever, I wish I was more like them. And all that takes is learning, opening your mind and... <laughs> YouTubing it, Googling it, whatever. I have friends who have installed kitchen sinks for me and people who know how to do that. I admire that. And guess what? If women want to do that, they can do that. It's very, it's psychological too. I mean, it's a give and take. You know, if a, woman, if a woman wants to ask a guy to help her and the guy is more than willing to do it, it's a trade-off, man. And it's 
not like because life isn't fair or because that's the way it is. And it's it's relationships. It's the way people interact with one another. But that is that's precisely that's precisely the way it is. Then isn't it? If that is how people, that, if a woman, yeah. if a woman does not want to rely on a man, she can learn how to do all these things herself, and then she doesn't have to rely on a man. If a woman doesn't want, if a woman doesn't want to learn how to do all these things herself, and she is okay relying on a man, that's her choice. Naturally, and, and, I'm not. I'm not saying that's. I'm not saying that's impossible. And a lot of the subject matter and like the way Tate just debates with these types of topics, it's like. You gotta know he's generalizing. He's not a fucking idiot. Like, but he's just speaking to the masses. I think a lot of this thing that he's this whole part of it is just to get more famous. Talking fast, cursing, generalizing. It's hard to give a reaction to that because you know all of that is sensationalism for his channel. It's not all of it though. That is it how gets people riled up. But that's I, the numbers. I believe that is truly the essence. Like the message of what he's saying is congruent with his lifestyle. Obviously, he is intelligent enough to know that that is part of what made him the most Google man on the planet. And he obviously can influence more if there's more attention on him. So, yeah, part of it is just to be sensational. But Look, he does live a sensational life, it seems like. He got arrested for the second time? Like, <laughs> what? I said he, he obviously lives a sensational life, which is evident by the fact that he was just arrested for a crime he may or may not have committed for the second time, which he was released from jail the first time. So, okay, well, but, anyway, I think, a, I think a lot of this and, and what drives the numbers and the analytics and the followers and is, is the demeanor, yeah. the way you talk, what you're saying, and, and it gets people riled up and talking it. And, but I you mean, know, I'm like, dude, if it's, if he's whatever. reporting facts, I, I mean, obviously, I'm a man. I prefer that because that's how I I wish I could talk like that all the time. Uh, well, but obviously, I can't. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and how they want to live their lives. But when you start saying this is the way it is across the board for everyone, I don't think that's the but case. In, ge have, in general. People have choices in how they live and what they believe. So anyone telling you this is how it is. Mom, it's but like in in general, if say we were not a society that embraced feminism that had like adopted it basically into our culture as a main thing, right? Say we were anti-feminism, we were trying to hold the feminists back, and all the feminists had to do was just combat that, like to become for it to become how prevalent it actually is in our society. All the blue-haired Ithaca girls with the witch piercings and all the feminists who claim, like, everyone should be equal or whatever, they would have to defend that idea. And if it really came down to it, it would come to physical violence. And it's like, what are the odds that that could ever be a fight that feminists are able to win to defend their idea? And he's saying... He's saying, stop, like, stop. zero. So, stop a second. I don't, there's the... It's not fighting, physically fighting to defend your ideas is war. There are other ways that people fight and stand up for their ideas and ideals, and that's how laws are changed Look, in governments and stuff. It's not about, oh, let's go to war about this. I get it. It's just the way I heard it, and I think they're going to talk more about it, and he's going to further articulate this point so you could better understand it. So I won't say much more, but it, he's, I think it, what I just heard is, like, when it comes down to it, if an idea is supposed to be, like, the one that the general okay, consensus I've heard, I've heard all of what he said about that. Feminism, you need men to defend your feministic ideas. I think they do. I, you know, you could say the same thing about... Oh, gay people, you need someone else to defend your ideas. No, you don't, because there's enough of a voice out there that laws get changed without having a war and a physical fight about it. If yeah, but it's, it's, a little, enough, it's a little... If the voice is strong enough, like eventually, you know, if people are outraged enough, mm. eventually laws change to accommodate things that are unfair. That does make sense with how you're saying it. I don't know exactly why 
uh, I feel like there's something, there's like a caveat that makes that kind of debatable. Right? Because but what I just until told I think you, about it. Because the sensationalism to get his followers and whatever. When he says that, it's a, an across the board, this is the way it is. And feminists need men to defend their ideas. Well, okay, one could argue that like, because <laughs> you just mentioned the... LMFAO community, maybe I'll edit that out. The LGBT whatever community. I said right? gay. I just said gay. Yeah, it's called the LMFAO but community same, now. But, same but look, without, you, you, you mentioned it, so going on that, let's say like, okay, you said they don't need anyone to defend their ideas, they're able to like pass laws like gay marriage or whatever. But as far as like all of history, has being gay been more accepted or has being straight been more accepted? All I'll say to that is, it's a changing world that we live in, That's a fact. and the train has left the station, and I don't think it's going back, and <laughs> the gay thing has always existed, it's just that they never talked about it openly before. Because it never, why is it? Because it was not an accepted standard of living, like you said, because but generally... I'm, I'm, I'm always, like, going to the, the root cause and effect. Like, what do you think is the reason why no one wanted to accept it for all these millennia or whatever? Because people would be stoned to death in the street if well, they were that or whatever. That's, and, a that's lot a, of, <laughs> and a lot of people still are in many countries. And I can see why that would be look a motivator. At the, look at Tatar, the World Cup. And look, I would see why that'd be a motivator. You heard about illegal. the... You heard you heard about the you heard about the Argentine babes who were like almost gonna get locked up for having their breasts out at the game. Maybe we could talk about that some other time. You're speaking to an Argentine who left her country at age six. That's why that's why I asked you. But yeah, no, but you were I watching heard, the World Cup. I heard Cup, a little you know. about that, but you know, let's not get into that right now. We're we'll talk about that another, another another okay, time. Okay, guess we're gonna have to nip it a little bit because I are you done? Because this, this woman has to work. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right well then maybe we can pick this up some other time because we're not even like i mean this is a long interview i know this is way they too talk long. about i'm not a lot i'm of sorry shit. but i can't be a guest on your show for three hours I have too no much, it's cool i've already I have too much work to i do i the, the first anything you want to say to the people before we go uh i don't know look at this guy he's got some interesting uh videos he started off kind of rough but i think he's cute and anyway i'm partial he's my son Oh, you're talking about me. Okay. Well, what do you think overall about Andrew Tate so far? I know you don't know that much, but... You mean, the, I told you. The bald guy. I, th I think he speaks too fast. He's got good teeth. He's rude. He He's just, he's obnoxious, and he sort of says, this is the way it is. That's what I'm seeing right now, so... Right. He's not completely well, endeared to my heart. Sure. And that's okay. And we'll work on that, y'all. With your help, maybe. So, let us know what you thought. Let me know what you think of my mom. I know she's great. She's pretty. Uh, appreciate you coming on, Mama. And this will be interesting. Let's let's see how they like it, you know. And I'll try to chop it up to be as as organic of a conversation as it has been, while not being a thirty minute video because I'm afraid that's what we're that's what we're going yeah, on. Yeah, no. It was good talking to you, Mama. Until next time. I love you. Love you. Wait, Bye. quick Lou runs Bye. for the people. Say Lou runs. Lou runs. All right, Lou runs. See ya.